to to be delivered uh, around uh, five up to ten minutes also so uh to make it short let me start to call the first presenter so uh please uh the committee the the first presenter will be by video or by uh, live presentation let me call sorry the, the first presenter should be hari aprianto wijaya siahaan uh, from uh, meteorological station of sorong uh, with uh, with the paper on the upwelling observation in cendrawasih bay west papua indonesia So Hari Aprianto, are you here? So let's wait for around uh, three minutes to, to confirm the presence of uh, Hari Aprianto. Yeah, it seems that uh, the first presenter is uh, uh, does not come to this uh, session. Uh, I will continue with uh, the second one, uh, and then maybe we will have another calling for the first presenter. So the next one is uh, Ronnie Kurniawan from the BMKG uh, with the the research about the evaluating skill of BMKG wave model forecast with observation data in Indian Ocean. So, Ronnie, are you here? Yes, Pak Okay, so uh, you have uh, 10 minutes to present uh, your research, and uh, I will remind you uh, three minutes before your time out. Okay, I want to permit to share my slide. Thank you, Mr. Sapari. Can you see my slide? Or uh, if my uh, sound is not good, you can tell, tell me? Yes, everything OK, I think. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon uh, for all the participants. Uh, I will present about um, our research about the evaluating scale of MKG model forecast uh, using Wavefort 3 with the observation data in, in, in Indian Ocean. And this is uh, the background uh, in our research. Uh, as we know that the marine meteorological information services are uh, really important uh, and must be available continu continuously for public information, especially for ocean information. And uh, in Indonesia, uh, I think the uh, MKG is one institution which is a responsible for providing maritime forecast information. And the second observation and measurement data in the ocean, I think is very limited and if any is already continuous. And we have in case modeling may provide more complete uh, and continuous data in addition to a flavor of observation and measurement data. And right now, the MKG is a wavefort 3 model to provide the fake forecast in Indonesia, uh, Indonesian waters. And uh, this model operationalized since 2014. Uh, so I think uh, needed for evaluation because some wave forecast users informed that the result of the wave forecast uh, from the MKG uh, were higher than reality. So this condition will be. Uh, important to consent to conduct a validation study on the uh, 
PMKK web for test results. And this is our uh, proposal of uh, uh, our research to evaluate PMKK web model uh, right now using the Wave 4 3 uh, about the performance for seven day forecast and uh, to analyze for, for uh, the forecast skill for recommendation and performance the model. And how about the data and methods? Uh, about the data, we use uh, the, the observation data uh, with and when surface uh, from uh, research visual mirror uh, from in Indian Ocean around four degrees uh, 14 shot, 101 degrees 31 east, uh, about uh, 100 kilometer from west of Sumatra Island. And the date the third period on 5 until to 31 December 2017. And how about the PMK cable forecast data? Uh, we use uh, from uh, with what three output, uh, the parameter uh, says cover significant, significant wave height and wind surface for seven days forecast start from zero UTC every each day. And the spatial resolution, seven kilometers and uh, some spatial tempo, temporal of uh, three hours and uh, forecast for day ahead uh, in every is data. Uh, I think the data period, the uh, same, uh, we took for the same period with the uh, observation data. And this is the position of the research facial, uh, the research uh, facial mirror. Uh, this is the uh, research facial mirror position around about 5.5 uh, kilometers. I, so the position of the mirror during the observation, I think is within a radius uh, uh, 5.5 kilometers. So I think it's still in the spatial resolution of uh, with what uh, model about seven kilometers. And this is uh, with what forecast data from the MKG. Uh, and this is uh, uh, the, Sample for PMKK forecast. Uh, PMKK wave forecast uh, for seven days uh, forecast in uh, every each day. <laughs> and this is uh, our methods about the, our research. We use uh, a static statistic correlation and we use uh, a relative operating character score. Uh, I think this is uh, to identify. Uh, identify Defy skill performance uh, about the web model forecast uh, again observation data. And I want to say about the previous research. Uh, <clears throat> about the previous research uh, evaluation of uh, web model uh, was carried out by Daddy in 2015, uh, he presented in Blue Arts Symposium in 2016 in Tokyo. Uh, the study conducted uh, an evaluation of uh, wave -word model uh, from PMKG by comparing with wave data observation from research visual mirror. And the correlation of planet is about uh, 0 0.78. And uh, this is uh, I want to so, uh, I want to tell you about the, the, the important uh, to know if uh, this research uh, the correlation between observation data and uh, with what three model at the same time using analysis data. So this is not for forecast data, and the other research, uh, Andre in two thousand and fifteen on his uh, dissertation. Uh, he tried to compare with the altimetry data and he got the correlation about 0 0.896. And uh, I make uh, the note if uh, this research correlation between observed data with the model at the same time using analysis data. So, uh, so uh, I will concern uh, from this, uh, from our research, uh, I want to tell you if the, this research not forecast data. So how about the, uh, our research? Uh, I, I, we will try to compare uh, the same uh, the same method. Uh, we try to compare with the uh, time series of the uh, wavefold three uh, model analysis uh, with research visual mirror. We got the correlation. Uh, 
zero point seven two, and I want to tell you uh, all the results uh, uh, comparing uh, the model with the same data period with observation data. So, how about the forecast accuracy? This is a uh, uh, our research concern, and this is the uh, uh, this is the yeah timer for you, uh, Ronnie. So you yeah. will have uh, three minutes more. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, this is the time series. Uh, we can uh, see the it, this is a uh, forecast day one, forecast day two, forecast day three uh, until to uh, forecast day seven. Uh, this is. Uh, the, for this graph, you can see that the, if uh, the waveboard model forecast, uh, we can see this. Uh, we can see this forecast with observe uh, this figure part ten. Uh, we saw that waveboard model provide a good forecast until to uh, until to second day's forecast, I think. And after uh, the forecast uh, for day three, uh, the model. Uh, the forecast accuracy begin to deteriorate from three days uh, up to uh, up to seven days forecast. So I think uh, this sum up uh, this figure, the time series so that the forecast given by waveboard model until two days ahead provided good forecast skill, but uh, even for some condition, but the forecast skill starting from three days ahead begin to deteriorate until two seven day forecast. And this is, uh, uh, this figure, uh, the result uh, from the uh, sum up of uh, statistical correlation. Uh, this is, uh, we can see that uh, if we use the analysis data, the correlation uh, more than 0 0.7 and for day one, I think still good, uh, 0 0.7 and until forecast day two. And after that, uh, I think uh, the correlation is uh, and the second method, we, we want to know about how about the scale uh, uh, with model. So uh, this is the, the result of the ROC curve. Uh, the first day, uh, the under uh, cover is uh, the result from ROC method uh, 0 0.87. And the second day forecast, uh, I think until to seven day forecast, uh, more than uh, 0 0.7. So the sum up is uh, this model, I think uh, a good skill for uh, the forecast, but uh, the forecast uh, decrease in performance further away uh, from the third forecast. And this is the, uh, Correlation of waveboard three uh, with the observation. Uh, we can see that uh, this is the UP wind correlation uh, with waveboard three again observe uh, again observation data from research vessel Mirai. Uh, this is a forecast day analysis. This is forecast. Uh, uh, sorry, this is uh, I, we compare with the analysis data and forecast day one and forecast day two. And uh, the correlation value has decreased from uh, forecast day one until to forecast day seven. So, Barani, your yeah. time is okay. Up. Okay, uh, one second. So, yeah, I yeah. will skip this. Uh, this is this is uh, only uh, the time series data. Uh, okay. Uh, for day for forecast day one until to forecast day seven, and this is uh, our sum, uh, sum up of my research. Uh, the first the skill forecast of MKK model, I think, uh, provide good result for day one uh, until to day, uh, day two forecast. Uh, while uh, day until uh, while day three forecast until to uh, seven day forecast fall in the in the in the in the fire category and. The second, the result of the forecast are not good after the day second forecast. Uh, I think uh, we try to analyze and why uh, this condition can maybe uh, this condition can be caused by wind data from GFS, which is not good for the three days forecast or more. Uh, 
Uh, if you look the result of the statistical correlation, provide good result for uh, second day's forecast. Uh, so the average, the, the average following our broad mean square error, absolute bias, and relative error high. And in general, the forecast results are overestimated. Therefore, this need an attention in order to improve the model forecast uh, information. And so uh, we want to give the recommendation to uh, prior to performing report model assessment. Okay. I think it is uh, advisable to carry out preliminary, preliminary research to some material as follow the first uh, we must analyze of the uh, GFS in op output data as the input utilized by report and the second attempting to use the other wind data product as the input of reports. Uh, for example, we win data of uh, work output. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, thank you, Paroni from BMKG, uh, presenting the, the study about the evaluating skill of uh, BMKG with model forecast. So, uh, dear participant, you can uh, write down your question in the chat room, and I will read it uh, during the discussion session. So, we will move to the next uh, presenter, who is uh, Randy Firdaus from Center for Marine Meteorology, uh, BMKG. With, uh, with uh, the paper about uh, ocean current measurement and analysis. So, uh, Randy, uh, are you here? Yes, Mr. Supari, I'm here. Yeah, uh, so time is yours, 10 minutes for you. Okay, let me share my screen. I need confirmation is my voice and my cell skin is okay. Yeah, everything's good. Okay. Uh, all right, good late afternoon, everyone. Thanks for helping me in ICT MS. Uh, I'm Randy and I'm presenting my colleagues, Miss Eja and Dr. Purkon. We are from Center for Marine Meteorology. We are uh, present our work about ocean current measurement and analysis using high frequency radar in the Bali Strait. This is the outline presentation today. And for the introduction, uh, we already know that the Bali Strait has an important role in various important sectors. And this thread is well known for its strong current, but uh, unfortunately, there are lack of observation data in here. Thus, the BMKG has made an effort to protect the ocean current by installing the HF radar. And the, for the HF radar itself, the scientists are uh, agree that this is the cutting edge uh, remote sensing technology for the sea surface current mapping. Uh, HF radar is used the high frequency radio waves to map the sea surface and web remotely, and it has a unprecedented spatial and temporal resolution. This is for the example. This is the uh, high resolution model from Berlianti and Yanagi. As we can see in this box, there are only five vectors of current. But in the same location, if we if we use HF radar, there are at least five, 50 vectors of ocean current. And HF radar is widely used for various activities such as marine safety, model validation as assimilation, and also tsunami early warning. Uh, unfortunately, at least for the published papers, there are no or very little comprehensive studies about HF radar in Indonesia. So in this research, we try to investigate the capability of HF radar to describe the tidal and residual current in Bali Strait. For the method, this is the uh, simple project that we use in this research. We have the HF radar and ADCP data we compare the zonal and the meridional uh, current of each uh, data and do the harmonic analysis to produce the tidal and residual current. For tidal current, we compare with the tidal data from BEG. For the residual current, we compare with our marine AWS data. We made some analysis and made the conclusion. Here is the detail of data we use in this research and the map of uh, the instrument that we use. For the information, we are not used the same data for verification and for analysis. 
because the lack of uh, observation data in Bali Strait. And for the data acquisition and processing, the transmitted uh, radio frequency web uh, will uh, transmit back to the the antenna receiver will experience the bright scattering and the Doppler shift. From that, we can calculate the radial velocity of each HF radar. If we combine the both radial velocity, we can calculate the total velocity. And the, for the data comparison, we compare the ADGP and HF radar data using the RMSE and correlation coefficient. As I mentioned before, we are not using the same data for the analysis and the verification. And we already know that observed current is the tidal color is equal to a tidal current plus residual current. In harmonic analysis, we can calculate the tidal current, so we can uh, finally we can calculate the residual current using this formula. This is the result that we get from our works. The first one is data comparison. Uh, this is the comparison of a three-hour moving average meridional and zonal current between HF radar and ADCP. This uh, figure show that the meridional meridional current is uh, quiet uh, in a, uh, a good agreement with the between HF and the ADCP, but uh, in zonal current is uh, not very good. The low accuracy of zonal current, we assume that's because the high, uh, because the very strong meridional current that can distort, uh, distort the air, H radar antenna, and maybe also because the sum interpret of uh, other devices with similar frequencies. For the characteristics of sea surface current, uh, based on monthly standard deviation and monthly of meridional current, we can see that there are two different characteristics of uh, current in balistrate. The first one is the high value of mean standard deviation and meridional current is uh, high in mid to east side and the opposite is uh, point in the mid to west side. And the strong current in the middle of the strait, uh, we assume that because this is the main channel of the Bali strait and uh, we also assume that the ITF or, or Indonesian Tropo is uh, play an important effect to this channel because in July, uh, the ITF is each the uh, reach its peak, but the further information investigation is absolutely needed to confirm that. Uh, from this uh, figure, we only choose to point to analyze the tidal current at this point and did, and this point for the uh, residual current, and we only use the meridional current because the meridional current is the only. HF radar current that have a good agreement with the ADCP. For the harmonic analysis, uh, we found at least 25 significant harmonic constituent, and the dominant constituent is the principal lunar semi dunar and the principal lunar dunar. From combination of the principal lunar, uh, principal lunar dunar and the principal semi dunar we calculate the Poisson number and get the number of 0.7, which means the tide, uh, the tidal current is the mixed tide prevailing semi -dunal. In other words, uh, in a day there will be too high and too low tidal current with a different speed. This is the comparison between the total meridional, harmonic, and residual meridional current. From this uh, figure, we can see that the dominant meridional current is the harmonic or tidal current because its graphic is uh, almost the same with the total meridional current. And the residual current uh, have a very random pattern with the speed reaching 0.8 to the north or to the south. And for the harmonic current, uh, the strong current is uh, occur when the spring takes at this uh, time, and the weak current is uh, in the nip tide. Uh, in contrast, the residual current have a very random pattern. Uh, sometimes it's uh, strong in the nip tide, but sometimes it's uh, also strong in the spring tide. We cannot uh, predict the residual current. Andy, you uh, have uh, yeah. two minutes more. Okay, for the tide and tidal current, uh, we plot the 18 days harmonic current. The 
we can see that this is uh, for the uh, at the low low tide the current direction is not uh, not what and the high uh, tide is for the short one and we can see that the relationship between the tide and tidal current is not that simple for flat condition uh, the maximum northward velocity uh, is not at the first uh, max uh, at first peak but at the second peak it called the hydraulic tidal current system in contrast for the app condition the maximum southward velocity is the at the lowest tide it called the progressive web system uh, and for the residual current, in contrast to the harmonic current, the maximum and mean not what residual current is faster uh, than the southward. Uh, it because the dominant wind in uh, July 2020, uh, based on the marine AWS data, is uh, from south to southerly. This uh, wind could generate the northward current. And we apply the power spectral density to determine the oscillation period of uh, the data. From the spectral analysis, we can see that the residual meridional current and meridional wind show a similar uh, spectral. The strong oscillation of period 0 0.5 and one hours are uh, found in both of data. It indicates the wind affect the residual meridional current in the balustrade. Uh, for the conclusion, uh, comparison between HF radar and ADCP data are in good agreement for the meridional current. Uh, the dominant current is the tidal current with different effect in different location, and the velocity path, uh, pattern of meridional harmonic current during high tide and low tide is different. And the last one, the spectral density analysis showed that the 0 0.5 and 1 hour oscillation was found in both wind and current data. From this work, we would like to thank to Marine Meteorological Analysis and Prediction and Center for Research and Development, uh, whom provide the uh, ADCP data. We also thank to the Indonesian Agency for Geospatial or PEG for pro providing the online title data. And finally, thank you and happy World Mid Day 2021. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Randy, uh, for the presentation about the uh, uh, ocean current measurement in the Bali right? And uh, yeah, again, uh, uh, inviting uh, participant to to write down the question in the chat room, or you also have an option to uh, to directly ask in the, during the discussion session. So next, we will move to the uh, to the other presenter, which is with Roy Saida Sanjaya from the Sudan University. Uh, with the uh, with the study about the impact of climate change on coastal dynamics uh, in Jepara. So, Roy Saida Sanjay, are you here? Okay, so we are waiting the response from the Roy Saida Sanjaya. Yeah, we we will wait uh, around uh, one minute more to make sure that uh, Roy Saida Sanjaya join with our session. So I think uh, uh, the next presenter should uh, prepare. Uh, Joshua Adenugro from Biak Metro Station. Maybe you, you, you can prepare it for uh, yeah, I have a note from from the committee that uh, Roy Saida uh, does not join the meeting. Uh, okay.
Ya. Uh... Oke. Okay. Uh, the the presenter of uh, Roy Saida Sanjaya sent us the link of YouTube. So I will uh, play the the YouTube uh, video uh, for us to hear uh, the presentation. Uh, let me set up first. So, dear participant, can you look at the, the YouTube window in the Zoom? Yes, but sorry. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the response. So, I will uh, play the, the, the video of our presentation. Uh, sorry, uh, let, me let me share with the audio one. I was impressed by the impact of climate change on coastal dynamics in the coastal area of several regions in Central Java province in Indonesia. Introduction Coastal area is an area with very high climate, one of which can be seen from sand coastline. Variation dynamics are caused by several influences such as climatic variations, cellular earth energy and influence of this global warming had a significant on the environmental causes climate change. Nowadays the impact of global climate change currently play an important role in the dynamic of coastal area because it has caused sea level rise and shoreline changes to the rising surface strata on first time have an impact considering that Indonesia is an archipelago with many coastal area and small island. Jepara is one of the area in the northern part of Java Island, Indonesia, which border the Java Sea. This regency, regency okay. has uh, an It seems that the, the sound is not really good. Uh, let me uh, request to the committee to share the uh, YouTube from uh, from the other place. So uh, the committee, please share the video from uh, YouTube with uh, for this presentation. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let me introduce myself. My name is I was present for the impact of climate change on coastal dynamics in the coastal area of the region in Central Java province in Indonesia. Introduction. Coastal area is an area with very high climate, one of which can be seen from sand coastline. Variation of dynamics are caused by several influences, such as climatic variations, earth energy, and influence of this global warming had a significant on the environmental causes climate change. Nowadays, the impact of global climate change currently play an important role in the dynamic of coastal area because it has caused sea level rise and shoreline changes to the rising surface strata on first time have an impact considering that Indonesia is an 
archipelago with many coastal area and small island. Jepara is one of the area in the northern part of Java Island, Indonesia, which borders the Java Sea. This region has an area of 1 million and 4,132 kilometers squared and is famous for its coastal tourism. Many coastal problems are found in this area, both as a risk result of natural conditions and human activities damage along the 7.6 kilometers of the total length of the coast which is the 72 kilometers also accurate in this area so the study aims to analyze the dynamic of the Japara coast from the aspect of changes in coastline and surface temperature due to climate change Methodology. The method and data used in this study use climate sensing analysis with source line extraction and land surface temperature LSD, on landscape imagery in 90 and 88 and 2000 and 2020. The LSD method is used to determine temperature changes that occur and link them between climate change and shoreline changes that occur on the coast of the Oregon Sea. This table is information on the landscape issues. This is work flow on landscape processes. Result and land surface temperature is one of the parameters to see climate condition besides that it can be used to help determine regional and global climates. Based on landscape image processing from 90 and 88 to 2020, it is now that over a period of more than 30 years, there has been an increase in land surface temperature results in the Paragon Sea. Based on the growth tree, it is now that from 90 and 88 to 2000 in Japan Regency only experienced an increase in surface temperature of 0.41 Celsius degree. However, from 90 and 88 to 2020, there has been a significant increase in surface temperature in Japan Regency, namely 4.7 it has an impact of climate change. of the analysis of the line of the coastal area of the Regency from the 90 and 88 Lancet 5 PM image and 2000 Lancet 7 ECM and 2020 Lancet 8 only or changes using the band ratio approach to emphasize the boundaries between land and sea and on screen digitizing it is now that coastal dynamic the most dominant is the abrasion and operation process in 1980 to 2000 the incidence of landed that of coastal abrasion rates 319.17 hectares in the study area while the addition of land or aggression creates 1050 Based on this, it can be considered that the dynamic of the coast in Japan region 90 and 88 to 2000 was dominated by the process of coastal abrasion. The based on the result of the 
analyze and image processing from 2000 to 2020 the coastal area of the Paragi district experience an abrasion of 102.54 hectare on the other hand the incident of expression trees to 149.25 hectare based on this it can be considered during the time from 2000 to 2020 the dynamic of the Jepara coast was dominated by the edge or plant aggression is on the research that has been done it can be concluded that global warming has caused the phenomenon of climate change is the it in, indicated by an increase in surface temperature of 4.77 celsius degree during the period 90 and 88 to 2020 then during the period 9 and 88 to 2000 there has been a change in, in the coastline with the dominant coastal dynamic during on the coast of Jepara with its erosion well mean, meanwhile during the period 2000 to 2020 the dominant coastal dynamic was sedimentation expression incident of abrasion expression is influenced by various factors but highest so and anthropogenic so it can be concluded that the impact of climate change addition to causing sea level rise will also cause global wind pattern of change affect the circulation pattern of west and ocean current monitoring change in the coastline is very important to do especially in the midst of the change crisis that is hiding most the entry board identification 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 shoreline change provide information to coastal scientific engineering decision maker and stakeholder for future management and develop plan for coastal science. Thank you for your time and attention. Yeah, uh, thank you for the committee for uh, playing the video of uh, from Roy Saida Sanjaya from Semarang University, Indonesia. So, uh, again, we will have a you will have uh, a presentation about the uh, current uh, data. Uh, let me call the, the next uh, presenter, with Joshua Adenugroho from uh, Meteorological Station of Biak. Joshua, uh, are you here? Good afternoon, Mr. Mr. Supari and yeah. everyone. Okay. Do you uh, hear my voice clearly? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this uh, uh, are you ready? I'm sorry, Mr. Supari. Uh, if I turn off my camera, I have some network upstream issues here in Papua. If I turn on my camera, it would affect the, the downstream. Okay. Yeah. We have a very low uh, upstream uh, bandwidth here. Okay. 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 So I wish my presentation delivered by you, please. Is it okay? By 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 video. Ah. I have sent it into the portal recently. Okay. Uh, yeah. Your committee, uh, please uh, help with uh, by playing the video from uh, Yeshua. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, let us wait for the for the video from the committee.
we are still waiting uh, the link from the committee. So uh, uh, before uh, while waiting for the video, uh, I will check the another presenter that uh, in, in the schedule. Uh, Adi Nova Fitrianto, are you here? Uh, I'm sorry for Adi Nova. Adi Nova Fitrianto is changed by me, Lisa Agustina. Uh, so the presenter is different. It's okay. Yes, yes. Uh, and then uh, there is also Muhammad Reza Fernyansa. Muhammad Reza, are you here? Uh, Okay, your microphone already okay. on. Let's just just confirm. Uh, so, are you here? Ah uh, yes, Mr. Supari. Yeah, I am here. Thank you. This is just to confirm that yeah, you are ready. Okay. So uh, the next one is uh, maybe uh, will be Ilham Fajar Putra Perdana. Yes, Mr. Supari. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the confirmation. And then. Uh, Fadli from Lapan. Hello? Uh, yeah, that's where I am. Okay, thank you. So, uh, okay, the the other presenters are already here. And, and then uh, we will start with a video from Yosua Adin Groh, the, the study about the comparative and analytical study of the Sikar data in the Bali space. Maybe you can cover the question. Yeah. Uh, okay, the first thing. Fadli, uh, please uh, turn off your microphone. It is good to be the part of this conference. First of all, this is a pre recorded presentation. In case of technical issues, this recording will be played at this conference. My name is Yusuf Nukroho. I come from Biak Meteorological Station. I want to deliver my presentation about my research entitled Comparative and Analytical Study of the Sea Currents Data from High Frequency Radar and Acoustic Doppler Current Profiler in the Bali Strait. Mm, before I start, I want to inform you that this paper is a part of the Bali Strait Wave and Current Survey Project hosted by Research and Development Center of BMKG or Puslitbang BMKG at Bali Strait. April 24th until May 3rd, 2019. For your information, recently the government of Indonesia through BMKG built some SF radar sites to support marine transportation safety and marine tourism interests. And the Banyuwangi SF radar is one of the first SF radar sites built in Indonesia. For your information also, uh, the Banyuwangi SF radar is in the range of the Bali Strait uh, observation for sea currents and the system began operating effectively on November 1st, 2018. And it is relatively new, I think. So the data quality needs to be well examined. In this study, the HF radar sea surface currents measurement data in the Bali Strait will be compared with the observed ADCP's data. And um, these are some recent supporting research in the different places and time. As we can see, there are wide variation of correlation, error, or meter value. Generally, they are showing a good result, but the radial velocity and direction of sea surface currents have various statistical data so and irregularity. Uh, the variation results show this variation that all of the that its research location has its own characteristic and dynamic. Regions shows you know that correlation with the data from previous the highest negative correlation is correlation cannot be used as a basis for declaring the validity of the a, the it's a further observation data at a particular location therefore it is necessary to hold verification of the HF radar output data using ADCP in the Bali Strait to determine the characteristic of variation and validity from the result of the observational data now I want to specifically show the show you all the research domain. The research location is in the Bali Strait, and the research time is from April 24th to May 3rd, 2019. Okay, this is the bigger map of the research location. 
you can see the red dots here are the SF trailer sites. The dark blue dots are the ADCP deployment point. The light blue here is the range of the SF radar observational point. And we can see the purple dots are the closest effective grid from SF radar to the ADCP deployment points coordinates. And these are the research data and instrument. The red text are the data. The green text here are the measuring instruments and the blue text here are the processing software. The method of this research is comparative with statistical approach and Okay, let's be moved to the result and discussion. Let me zoom in the tidal condition graph and expand it. The horizontal axis here is the observation time in UTC and the vertical axis is the sea level in meters. H here is stated as high tides and L here and here is stated as low tides. Both of these graphs have a similar synchronous patterns showing two highest peaks and two lowest peaks in the similar time interval. The tide types of ADCP1 and 2 is a mixed tide prevailing to semi eternal which is experiencing two high tides and two low tides in one day with different dates and periods. Let's remove in the variation in correlation value of HF radar and ADCP on radial velocity with the tidal condition result. We can see this is the horizontal axis shows the observed time in UTC and the primary vertical axis here shows the correlation value of the radial velocity in of the SF radar and the ADCP and the secondary vertical axis here represents the mean sea level which is described the average tidal condition in the balustrade at both location point at the time of the observation from this result. The HF radar and ADCP at both observation points tend to have a radial velocity data that only well correlated with the average first and second tide periods. You can see the red boxes here. While in other periods, the correlation is not good enough. Let's we move to the box plot. Let us see a box plot diagram of observation point one. Both data appear to have a distribution that tends to be normal with a distribution of almost the same value range. We can see here and is indicated by the type distribution and slight variation of the data. And the data value also tends to have uh, similarities. And we can see then at the box plot of the observation point two, in general, both data have a distribution that tends to be normal but has a different range of data values. The HF radar has a median value that is much different from the ADCP data. Even the HF radar median data is in the outlier value of uh, the ATCP. HF radar also tends to have a wider range of values with a maximum value greater than ADCP observation. This shows that the radial velocity value of the HF radar tends to overestimate the ADCP. The difference in the range of radial velocity data values of the HF radar and ADCP at the observation point two can occur due to the limited amount of data and observation time. Okay. Let's move to current rows at the observation point one. On the HF radar diagram, the patterns of sea surface currents direction is varying and inconsistent. We can see the spreading patterns here. And on the, the ADCP diagram, the pattern of sea surface currents tends to appear consistent in two opposing directions. At the observation point two, the trend of HF radar uh, is consistent, but in one direction only and the ADCP uh, tends to appear uh, consistent in two opposites. It's just like the ADCP in the observation point one. From the result obtained, it can be seen that the radial velocity patterns and the direction of sea surface currents of the HF radar at the observation point one are influenced by many factors because we see the spreading of the patterns here, which is thought to be influenced uh, mainly by surface wind. This is in accordance with the projected measurement of an observation of sea surface currents carried out by the HF radar system. And we can see at ADCP, the radial velocity and the direction pattern of 
high CP are only influenced predominantly by tidal condition, both in both location. This is in accordance with the observation method used by ADCP itself. The current layer condition based on the ADCP recording data. Uh, it can be seen that from the surface to the depths of the sea, the current velocity is increasingly homogeneous. The lowest level of uh, ADCP 1 and 2 are showing a homogeneous tidal range and slower radial velocity at a range of 0 until uh, 50 cm per second. And the highest level of ADCP 1 and 2 are showing a heterogeneous wider range and faster radial velocity at a range of uh, 0 until 150 cm per second. Uh, this indicates that there is a persistence of sea current in the deepest layer compared to the sea level. Okay, and we move to conclusion. The tidal condition in the Bali Strait at the time of observation are mixed tide prevailing semi diurnal. The sea current's radial velocity characteristics show good persistence in the lower layer than the upper layer, and the radial velocity data of the sea surface current of the interpreter and ADCP tends to only have the same and representative values at the average of the first high tide and second low tide periods, will with the HF radar data tends to overestimate the ADCP. And HF radar and ADCP sea surface current data are influenced by tidal condition. The causes of differences in the sea distribution patterns of radial velocity and direction of sea surface currents cannot be explained specifically and absolutely in this study. The addition of more ADCP instrument at several observation points in the Pali Strait is highly recommended for better representation and data density. A longer observation time is also suggested to obtain better climatological data for more representative result. Okay, this is, these are my references from four books, eight journal and one online resource. This research was supported by Pus Litbang and Pus Metmar BMKG. And we thank our colleagues from STMKG who provided insight and expertise that greatly assisted the research. And if you are interested with my research, please kindly contact me at my email, WhatsApp or Telegram. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so ten, 10 minutes for Yoshua. Uh, uh, a good quality of video, I think, uh, so we can hear clearly. And uh, here participants, we already finished uh, our first uh, part of uh, this session uh, consisting of uh, four presenters. So we will have uh, a session for discussion. There are some similar uh, topics for uh, the, the, the paper that has been presented. Uh, it's like uh, analysis of uh, current uh, in Bali Strait and also the, the, the what is the, uh, ocean modeling so i'm waiting for the question from uh, the participants for the discussion session so let me check first the chat room is there any question there yeah uh, it seems uh, there is no question from the uh, from the participants. Uh, so, Barry. Uh, okay. Uh, as, a, as a confirmer, may I have to give some suggestion now or at the at the end? Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, our plan, if uh, there is question from the participant, then the confirmer okay. will have to give our comments or question in the, in the end. But. Uh, because uh, we don't have any question from the participant, so uh, we will give uh, the convener around five minutes. Okay, thank yeah. you, Pak Subari. Yes. Uh, first, for Mr. Rony Kurniawan, uh, with the formatting skill of BMGC with model, uh, I hope that uh, this is a good verification using the correlation bias and root mean square error. And the result is uh, the forecast for the day one is quite good, but uh, worse for the day two, okay? But uh, I want to outline the summary. 
Mr. Roni just say need to need attention to improve the skill. So uh, this is uh, my question or suggestion. So my suggestion says, uh, what is your suggestion to increase the accuracy of the forecast? It, it would be better to give the suggestion to improve the skill of forecast. Because uh, at the summary, uh, Mr. Roni does not mention uh, how, to, how to improve the skill of forecast. So uh, uh, this verification will be better and will be useful if uh, Mr. Roni can give some suggestion to improve the skill of uh, forecast. And then uh, Mr. Randy, HL Arsati, Sida in Fur and Mr. Furkon, uh, they use uh, correlation, moving forward in harmonic analysis. Uh, before uh, you analyze the data, because this is a new instrumentation for PMKG, this uh, high frequency radar in ADC, in ADCP, okay? So I suggest that you need to explain the quality of the data before you analyze, okay? And then, uh, it would be better to give your suggestion which one uh, between uh, ADCP and SF radar uh, is, is the best one if, if they install at the Bali Street. Okay. Uh, number four, Ms. Roy Saida Sanjaya, the impact of climate. I have one question, and this is a very important. Uh, at the summary, they have one summary that surface temperature increased 4.77 degree between 1988 to 2000. So at the period of uh, 40, uh, 32, yeah. During 32 years, temperature increased 4.7 degree. But globally, at the hundred year, the, uh, uh, the, the temperature increase not more than two degree. So it's it, it's quite it's quite uh, extreme. So maybe uh, the, the maybe the writer should check first. Uh, is that true? If uh, Temperature increase 4.7 centigrade, almost five degrees. It's, it's too much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, Mr. Thank Joshua. You. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Maybe uh, you comment first. Yeah. So uh, we will give opportunity for the, the author to clarify. So let me okay, okay. call first the uh, uh, Paroni. Yes, Mr. Supari. Uh, yeah, can I you clarify the, the yes. comment from Pak Urip? Okay, thank you, Pak Supari. Thank you, Pak Urip, for the comment and for the uh, just uh, for our research. So, uh, it's okay. Uh, my conclusion is about the research could be taken in uh, consideration to improve the uh, reports model. Uh, about the performance and the forecast accuracy, but uh, before the improv, uh, before we uh, we took the improvement, I think we need uh, to know uh, more detail uh, why uh, the model can uh, cannot uh, accurate again after the day, the second day forecast. So the the last our conclusion. Uh, for uh, for the next conclusion, maybe we need to analyze uh, and verify about the input the uh, wastewater model data, because the wastewater model, model data uh, the the wind surface input using the KFS. So we need to verify uh, and analyze first about the KFS data, and the second. Uh, we need to compare about the other input data uh, for the report model. Maybe we can uh, use the uh, wind surface data from work 
maybe our SMF with uh, our SMVF. And so uh, we hope after the comparing with the other input data, we can uh, know about the performance uh, with what, uh, with what model. So uh, what is the problem uh, from the data or the report model? I think uh, uh, enough for, for my comment, Mr. Shapari. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Barani. Just continuing your research. <laughs> Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Paroni. Uh, so that is the clarification from uh, the author. Uh, and uh, the second one, actually, uh, for Roy Saida Sanjaya. Is that true, Paurab? Yeah? Andy. For, the, for the topic of climate change. But uh, I don't think that uh, the authors are here. So uh, maybe the, the, the questions uh, cannot be clarified or or answered by the, the authors. But let me call first. Uh, so is there any uh, authors from the fourth uh, abstract? This Royce Saida Sanjaya, Tulu Ilmu Nawaro, Mita Fikri Anggraini. Are you all here? Yeah, it's, uh, I don't think so. So, uh, but Urip, uh, do you still have any comments for other two presenters? Yeah, maybe I have uh, one comment for for Randy. Okay. Uh, I have I've mentioned before. So, uh, Randy, uh, can you uh, give any response to the comment from the conference? Yes, uh, thank you, Pak Uri, for the comment. Uh, we absolutely agree that the HF brother uh, must be quality control before analysis. And uh, now we are currently working how to uh, implement the key ARTOD quality control for HF brother uh, manual to our data, but uh, still working. And for this, uh, this research, we compare the HA brother and ADCP data to determine whether we use the total uh, factor current uh, in analysis or only zonal or meridional current. From the uh, comparison between HA brother and ADCP data, we show that the uh, meridional current is uh, in a good agreement with the ADCP. So in all of this, uh, uh, analysis, we only use the meridional, not the zonal. Maybe that's all. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, uh, thank you, Randy. Uh, so we still have an, uh, other one convener. Uh, let uh, me call the Payo Safat. Mr. Supari uh, yeah, uh, has all the present, uh, presenter presented. No, we, we still have uh, four presenters in the second part. Uh, I want to the last session because I want to raise some about the, all the uh, presenter. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, okay. So, uh, dear participants, uh, we'll continue with the second part. Uh, also consists of, uh, consists of four presenters. Uh, they all are here. Uh, let me call the the next presenter, Ade Nova Fitrianto from uh, PMKG. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, with the presenter is uh, Lisa Katina with the uh, the abstract uh, on the utilization of remote sensing data for mapping the effect of IUD and ENSO in Sumatra Islands. So, Lisa, are you ready? I'm ready, sir. Uh, yeah, can uh, may I start uh, screen? Yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Here, I want to present my paper titled uh, "Utilization of Remote Sensing Data for Mapping." 
for mapping the effect of Indian Ocean Dipole or IOD and El Nino Southern Oscillation and so in Sumatra Island. This paper is written by me, Lisa Agustina, Mr. Rista Hernandi Virjanto, and Ade Vidrianto from STMKG. First, I will give the outline before I start my presentation. First, I will give the introduction, then I will explain the data and method that we use. After that, I will show the result and the last is conclusion. Uh, start with introduction. Uh, the relationship between the land, ocean, and atmosphere in, in a region is closely related to its weather and climate. Based on the location, the variability of rainfall in Indonesia is intensely estimated to be influenced by several climate control systems. The global climate systems that affect on rainfall variability of Indonesia are Indian Ocean Dipole and El Nino Shorten Oscillation. And then in 2003, Hendon has found out that ENSO has influenced more than IOD in the dry season. And so can explain 50% of the rainfall variation, while IOD explained for 25%. Uh, Sumatra is located in the western north of Indonesia, so it is interesting to find the effects of ENSO and IOD uh, because uh, Hendon has found out that ENSO is uh, more influential than IOD. This study is uh, aimed to determine which global climate system is more influential to rainfall fluctuation in Sumatra using ENSO index, IOD index, and rainfall anomaly. Uh, the result of this study can help to identify the factors of monthly rainfall in Sumatra. The data that we use here are monthly rainfall uh, data based on the remote sensing observation from chips with a resolution of 0 0.05 degree. Uh, the data was downloaded from IRI LEO Climate Data Library. The period is 8, uh, 19 and 81 to 20 and 17 in Sumatra Island. Then the IED phenomenon was determined by the values of the mode index. The ME is accurate to represent the default mode in SST based on such research in 1999, the area of monitoring ID we can see here, uh, in here and in here, then uh, the data is downloaded from JAMstack. Then the ONI index or Oceanic index, you know, index is uh, downloaded from NOAA website. From the research of Bemstone at all, said that the Nino 3.4 region is the most representative to identify. And so uh, we can see here the region of Nino 3.4. And then the method that we use first is the rain, mon, monthly rainfall data from chips is processed into rainfall anomaly using climate data operator. Uh, the rainfall anomaly are then grouped into four groups DJF. Uh, JJA, MIM, and so on. Uh, furthermore, the rainfall anomaly is processed uh, using the R statistic application uh, because the format is NCD and net CDF and open in R statistic using NCDF for package. Then the anomalous data were correlated with the MI and ONI and map using the map package. See the correlation of rainfall fluctuation with ENSO and IOD indices. Move into result and discussion. Uh, then uh, the correlation results show that all of Sumatra have negative correlation with the uh, positive correlation in the small part of northern Sumatra. The highest negative correlation is in the southern part. We can see here reaches up to minus 0 0.4. And then uh, with the ONI correlation with rainfall anomaly can be seen in the picture. The correlation zone is a negative correlation across Sumatra with a high correlation in the northern part in the northern part and the southern part which is up to minus 0 0.4. And then move to DJF. Uh, you can see here that uh, the correlation between rainfall anomaly and uh, DMI shows a um, positive correlation over Sumatra with the highest correlation is in the central part, ranges from 0 0.1 to 0 0.3. And the, with the MI, the, the rainfall anomaly shows a positive and negative in the northern part of Sumatra. Then in the month period, we can still see here that uh, the correlation between rainfall anomaly and uh, the MI shows a positive correlation with the highest is uh, central part 
this is up to 0 0.4 and uh, with rainfall anomaly and and so we can see here the positive is shown in the southern part of Sumatra and the central and northern is so uh, negative correlation ranges from minus 0 0.1 to minus 0 0.5 then is JJI. Uh, the correlation is we can see here with the DMI is divided into two parts. With the southern part is a uh, negative correlation and the northern part is positive correlation. Uh, the positive correlation is ranges range from 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 and the negative correlation is ranging from 0 0.1 to negative 0 0.4. Then uh, we can see here with the ONI, we uh, shows a dominant negative correlation in across Sumatra and small northern part shows a positive correlation. Range from minus 0 0.45 uh, in here to 0 0.2. 0 0.2 is in northern part. And the sum is showing a highest correlation. Uh, we can see here the, the uh, shortened part of Sumatra, the correlation between DMI and rainfall anomaly uh, shows a high value reaching up to minus 0 0.4, 0 0.6. In this season period, the correlation value between DMI and the rainfall anomaly is the highest compared to the previous season periods. In the north, it shows correlation values from uh, 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 in here, and uh, in here is up to just uh, 0 0.3. And the correlation with only and rainfall anomaly, we can see in the southern part is the highest, reaches up to minus 0 0.5, but the largest part, uh, but the largest part shows a value just of minus 0 0.4. And the small part here in the northern, we can see ranging up to 0 0.2. Then the last is conclusion. Uh, the results show that remote sensing data from chips can provide good results in explaining the interaction between rainfall anomaly and IOD and ENSO phenomena in Sumatra. Furthermore, the remote sensing data can be used to analyze rainfall patterns that use point observation data are not covered. The DMI value has a high correlation with rainfall anomaly in Sumatra occurring during the transition season. Period, JJA and Sun. Uh, then the JJF period shows a positive correlation of up to 0 0.4 in the central part of Sumatra. During the Sun SOM period, the negative correlation is the highest, reaching minus 0 0.6 in Sumatra, southern part. And the correlation between rainfall anomaly in Sumatra and Oni is generally not clear in the periods of JJA and SON. However, the value is not as high as the correlation between rainfall anomaly and DMI. In general, the correlation value for rainfall anomaly in Sumatra has a higher value when it is associated with DMI compared to on. Nevertheless, the correlation of rainfall anomaly using data shows that the correlation with ONI has a higher negative correlation values in all parts of Sumatra compared to the DMI. This is the references that I use, uh, that we use. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Rita. Uh, I think uh, for us, with the, the impact of uh, IUD and on the data. So let me move to uh, the next part. Uh, Muhammad Reza Ferdiansa. Uh, okay. Pak Reza, uh, are you ready? Uh, okay, yes. Thank you, Pak Tupari. Yeah, you have uh, 10 minutes to present your uh, presentation. Okay, uh, so I would like to share my screen. So I hope uh, that you can hear my voice. Uh, 
Uh, hello, uh, good morning, afternoon, everyone. Uh, I would like to uh, talk about. I would like to talk about the definition of Idris Front philosophy of a coastal urban uh, using Himawari eight images. Uh, so this is the collaboration work with my colleague from the uh, STES uh, School of the Statistics, uh, Mr. Ari Wahyu Wijayanto. Uh, first, uh, I would like to uh, review but why uh, Sibris is important. So as we know that most mega cities, uh, the cities uh, with which has a population more than 11 million uh, all over the, the world uh, are located at coastal region. Uh, so Sibris uh, is expected uh, for the mitigation for the excess of heat uh, from the urban region. Uh, it is also well known as the urban heat island phenomena. Uh, besides its, its uh, cooling impact, Sibris uh, also is expected uh, for the air ventilation uh, due to the air pollution because the urban regions, uh, there are many uh, so emerging economy activity uh, on that regions. So uh, on the satellite images, uh, Sibris event can be observed as a distinct boundary uh, between the clear part at the upwind region and the cloudy at the downwind uh, region of the Sibris front. Uh, and uh, so by this, by tracking of this uh, cloud line of the cumulus cloud line, uh, this feature is traceable on the satellite images. So we try to track uh, the movement of this Sibris front by uh, detecting this type of cloudiness feature on satellite images. Then how uh, the cloudiness, uh, the cloud line can be detected. So from the computer fusion, uh, we can use the edge detection algorithms and uh, there are two approach. Uh, we can solve it by explicit way or the implicit way. And nowadays, many uh, studies are focusing on the implicit way of the edge detection. And we can also imply this method for automatic purpose uh, in detecting uh, the cloud line. For example, by using uh, the algorithms, next neck algorithm. So this algorithm actually consists of uh, such equation. Uh, the first two is for the internal part. This is for smoothing the edge or the curve. And the last part is the external part for attracting or the, the force to make uh, the contour uh, approaching the edge. Uh, so uh, for example, uh, Corpetti and Planchon 2010 study, uh, they combined this, this snake algorithm with the wavelet decomposition to provide the external part of this uh, part uh, for detecting the cloud lines so they can uh, successfully remove the uh, how to say the serous contamination uh, when when uh, they detect this cloud line and another study Ferdiansa et al 2020 they implement the morphological snake algorithm to estimate the arrival time of the Sibris front of Jakarta and they compare with the observation data so and then uh, even uh, from the previous studies, uh, the arrival time of the Sibiris front was able to be estimated uh, even automatic way. Uh, however, it is still not able to estimate the velocity of the Sibiris front propagation directly because the implicit way they, they use that they use. So uh, the study aims to estimate the propagation speed of the Sibiris front using the Cloudline database of Himawari 8 images and uh, we would like to propose an automated and objective procedure by using a dynamic k-min plus plus clustering method. Uh, so let's move to the data and method. Uh, our study area is Jakarta, capital city of Indonesia with more than 11 million of population. And we focus on the dry season, June, July, uh, sorry, July, August, September. And during this dry season, uh, mainly the prevailing synoptic wind blowing from the southeasterly. And Jakarta is um, uh, located uh, with the north, with the Java Sea at the northern part and the mountainous uh, area in the southern part. So uh, sometimes uh, in the afternoon, uh, the sea breeze is uh, combined together with the orographic wind. And we use the sea breeze days data set. 
uh, provided uh, from the study Ferdianza et al. 2020 did consist of the observation based data set and the satellite based data set. So we use the Seabreeze days of between 2017 and 2018 and uh, the, uh, with arrival time of the Seabreeze front uh, based on the observation site at KKP and BPL. So KKP is located near the coast area and the BPL located uh, near the city center. And uh, the satellite base, we use the cloud line data obtained from the Ben 3 image of uh, Himawari 8 satellite. Uh, this is the sample of iteration process by using the morphological snake algorithm in detecting the cloud line. Uh, the n iteration, the number of the iteration here uh, can be set depend on the uh, estimated maximum propagation. But as we can see here that even we set, uh, for example, 200 or 300 times, uh, when the cloud line can already uh, successfully detected at, for example, 150 in this case, uh, this line can be stable and uh, automatically stop. Uh, and uh, then uh, to estimate the velocity of the movement of the cloud line, actually what we need to, what we have to do is, uh, and what we want to do is to track the chain of the position of this cloud line, and we need to populate uh, the control point along the, this cloud line uh, from each cloud line. So for example, in the time T1, uh, the cloud line consists only four points, but in the time T2 consists at seven points. So how we make a pairing uh, from uh, cloud line T1 and cloud line T2. So we use uh, the K-min plus plus segmentation. So with this uh, algorithm, we try to populate the control point dynamically and objectively uh, from the one only one point to the maximum of the number of points in the cloud line. And then we calculate after we find the best pairing, uh, we calculate the nearest distance between uh, that cloud line to the cluster group or the point within a cloud line. And finally... Uh, Arisa, yep. Sorry, uh, you have uh, three rem uh, remaining uh, three minutes. Okay, thank you. Yes. So uh, finally, we calculate the velocity by dividing this distance by the time difference. So let's move to the result. Uh, so this is example of how to define the mean arrival time of Seabreeze front from 36 cases using the density function. Uh, this uh, image is the mean cloud line of at the 10 uh, a.m. in the morning, and this one is at 1.30 p.m. in the afternoon. So this one is uh, actually the mean arrival time that passing the KKP observation site and in the afternoon uh, it passing the BPL uh, observation site. So this one is uh, the result of the mean arrival time of the SBF derived from the cloud line detection from 9 um, a.m. to the 4 p.m. So we can uh, we can know from the every 10 minute images the propagation or the evol evolution of the cloud line during the sea breeze days. So here is the result for the uh, estimated uh, speed uh, calculated by our method. Uh, we found here that a wide range uh, was found, a uh, wide range of the speed at uh, 9 and 10 o'clock. And uh, we see also some many outlier here at 10 p.m. And the minimum unit speed uh, was found at 1 p.m. So actually 10 o'clock here is actually the mean arrival time uh, at KKP and 1 p.m. is the mean arrival time at BPL. So we can, we can see the pattern here, decreasing pattern uh, toward the, the, uh, the 1 o'clock uh, so, and then after passing this uh, BPL, we see slightly increase uh, in the afternoon. So even though we need a more uh, proof or investigating uh, whether the SBF propagate faster again after passing the urbanized area or not. And final uh, result is we check also the arrival time, uh, arrival, uh, sorry, the speed during the arrival time at the KKP near the coast and arrival at the BPL at the city center. So uh, for the KKP compared to the BPL, uh, we see uh, 10 
uh, tends uh, to the underestimate for the calculated speed compared to the observed uh, observe, uh, Sibiris front speed based on the observation. Uh, let me conclude uh, for today's talk. Uh, so the objective method for cloud line segmentation was addressed by k mean plus plus algorithm uh, to estimate the velocity of curve evolution. And we found that wider range of speed was found in the morning uh, than in the afternoon time. And minimum penetration speed was found at around uh, 1 p.m. And uh, by comparis comparison with the observed uh, SBF arrival time, uh, we got the RMSE values uh, 1.39 meter per second and for BPL 1.41 meter per second. And further uh, for future work, uh, we need a further examination uh, for the particularly about the cloud line movement at urbanized area. For example, to address this question, which one is uh, how to distinguish which one is associated with Sibiris front or not. And it is true whether uh, the city like uh, Jakarta is to be more cloudy. Maybe uh, that's all for today's talk and thank you for your kind attention. Yeah, uh, thank you, Paresha. Uh, for the presentation of uh, the velocity of sea breeze, sea breeze problem. Uh, so, to make it effectively, uh, we will move to another presenter, who is Ilham Pajar Putra Perdana from STMKG. Ilham, uh, are you ready? Yeah, yes. okay. So, uh, just like another, you, you have uh, 10 minutes to present uh, your uh, uh, material. Wait, let me listen to my question first. Okay. Okay. Does my sound clear enough? Yeah, okay. It sounds okay. good. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for the time. I am Ilham from Department of Meteorology of School Meteorology Climatology and Geophysics. Let me start my presentation. But before I start it, I want to ask two questions. First is, uh, what if we know the start, I mean both location and time of convective cloud? And then the second is, what if we can predict the start of that convective cloud. So maybe the answer of that two question is, we can get an earlier prediction. So we can more aware and ready to the impact of the heavy rain event. And that is become my, that becomes my background, why me, Ilham, and Mr. Dennis, my lecturer, try to conduct a research about convective initiation with headline, of an assessment of convective initiation of casting algorithm within zero up to 60 minutes using Himawari Air Satellite. Wackworth mentioned that uh, an accurate prediction of location and time of the first convective growth or called convective initiation or CI could be the main key in providing a better prediction of heavy rain event due to convective clouds. As we know that convective cloud can impact on socioeconomic losses, infrastructure, or even threaten human safety. So my research objective is to assess the performance of SATCAS. And we know that geostationary satellites are commonly used in monitoring cloud location, distribution, and development. But the question is, why SATCAS? The reason is SATCAS has a good performance. It apply an object tracking and it use infrared channel only. So we can use it during the day and night. So, but the overall reason is SATCAS has potential and a perspective in providing an earlier of every event through CI no casting. The research took place over Surabaya and around during June to August, 2018. And the area of interest is shown by the test line in that picture. Meanwhile, in this study, there are two data used. 
The first is six band of Himawari Air Satellite, SCI Predictor, and Surabaya Weather Radar as the data ver as the verifier. So the prediction is based on satellite data. There are three main processes in this study, and the first is called masking. This process will select the potential of thick cloud or immature cumulus and remove cloudless area cirrus and mature cumulus based on the equation below. This pixel-based evaluation will result all potential pixels and then those all nearest pixel were grouped into a single cloud object. The illustration is shown by the picture. What is the product of cloud masking? And the second is the object tracking. This process will track a particular cloud object, which the same object is defined if there is an overlapping area between two consecutive data or time. The blue object is the object at a particular time, and the red object is the, part, the object at 10 minutes ahead. If there is an overlapping area between two objects, the object will be assigned with the same ID with the overlapped object. But if the object do not overlap, it will be assigned with a new ID. And the third process is CI predicting. This process will determine whether a cloud object is predicted as positive CI or negative CI based on 12 interest fields. The positive CI or object which is likely predicted to precipitate a few minutes ahead is defined if it met at least seven criteria. Meanwhile, this negative CI is defined if it only met six or less criteria. The verification is conducted using Surabaya weather radar, using the Cotomus contingency method. Meanwhile, CI is defined as the first occurrence of reflectivity greater than or equal to 35 dBZ. And the time frame is limited to zero up to 60 minutes based on CI no testing capability. And then we evaluate whether this prediction is followed by CI event or not in the next zero up to 60 minutes. As the common contingency verification, it will count the number of hit, miss, false alarm, and correct negative. And there are four skill scores are calculated in the study. And here are the results. During the June to August period in 2018, there are more than 3,000 cloud objects detected. The verification results the number of hit, miss, false alarm, and correct negative event. The picture represents the frequency of each event over 20 kilometer grid box relative to the total number of each category. In general, the heat event spatial distribution are more concentrated over mountainous area, which line up in the certain part of East Java. And the, which is, it takes about 40%. Meanwhile, the miss event have a post opposite distribution, which is more concentrated over the northern coastal. Meanwhile, the false alarm and correct negative distribution are tend to more balanced. And here the temporal distribution, which hit and miss event are more frequent during afternoon until late evening. Meanwhile, the false alarm events are more frequent during late evening to down. And here's the performance of the algorithm. Out of four scores, accuracy achieves the highest scores at 80%, 87%, and followed by POD at 70, 57%, and FAR at 52%, and CSI at 35%. But also the accuracy achieved up to 87%. The other value shows that there are some factors that need to be concerned 
in the in providing a better performance of this CI no casting. Maybe it kind such as of uh, implementation machine learning or adjusting a threshold value based on some researches. And about the lead time, it seems that the 10 minutes lead time dominates in the distribution, followed by the six minutes lead time. You have? And yes. Uh, you still have uh, three minutes. Yes. Okay. And but overall, the the algorithm can have lead time up to 30 minutes. Overall, this score and lead time is comparable to original SATCAS performance, but is lower if compared to SATCAS with current development. And here's the last distribution, the last result, which the distribution of each lead time values at different altitudes is presented using stacked bar chart. In general, there is a decreasing frequency of over higher latitudes on shorter lead time, or we can say that there is a correlation between the location altitudes of CI event and the lead time prediction, which at higher altitudes, the lead time prediction tends to be longer. It can be caused by the period effect of the mountain, which slows down the wind. So the cloud can persist or sustain for a longer time before it begins to precipitate. And here's the conclusion. Based on the CI no casting algorithm named SATCAS, which is evaluated over Surabaya, the performance of SATCAS can achieve the accuracy for 80%, POD and fire about 50%, and CSI at 35%. And this algorithm is capable to predict CI events up to 30 minutes prior or before CI event. And Based on the result, it means that still needs further development, such as adjusting threshold, because this algorithm is dependent to threshold value or implementing dynamic threshold using machine learning. And this my main references. And if my explanation isn't clear enough or want to get further information, please contact me through this email. Thank you for your all attention. Yeah, uh, thank you, Elham, uh, for the presentation about the assessment of convective initiation no casting. So uh, we still have uh, the last presenter today, uh, who is Fadli from Lapan, with uh, the study about the quantitative precipitation estimation using Santanu radar. Uh, Fadli, are you still here? Yes, here I am. Yeah, uh, you have uh, 10 minutes to present your work. Uh, let's start now. Okay, can you see the first screen? Yeah, yeah, uh, this is good. Um, okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Well, good day, everyone. I'm Fadli from Center for Atmospheric Science and Technology, Lapan. Uh, I'm kind of the last person. Hello? Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of the, the last person for today in this room for presenting the research that we conduct. Yeah, the research that I, that I conduct um, is supervised uh, by my seniors in my uh, institute um, by <coughs> Madam Tim Sinatra, uh, Mr. Binadi Ari, and uh, Dr. Asif Awaduddin. <clears throat> well, hello. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I got it equal. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, continue. Um, we depart from the background that we know that various kinds of disaster caused by rain include floods, landslide, or other hydrometeorological disaster, such as natural areas and accidents. So it is necessary for us to have early detection in estimating the level of rainfall and also improving the weather forecasting system to reduce the risk factors causing the hydrometeorological disaster itself. So there are several methods, I mean, that attempt to measure rainfall. 
uh, we can use uh, rain gauge, uh, satellite, and also radar. But the rain gauge and the satellite, uh, unfortunately, they have a very small spatial resolution. So we have like um, uh, another option that is called as radar because radar, um, although its coverage is narrower, but it has a high resolution and can be installed in any vulnerable areas toward flooding and landslides. Here they are, the, wet, the weather radar classification. There was S-band, C-band, and X-band. But based on um, Peterson and McLevelin, they thought that the S-band radar is much smaller in size than the other two radars, but, uh, and also much cheaper than the others. So um, LAPAN, we proudly present the, the new uh, X-band that's uh, yeah, we focus on the X-band in this research, uh, as I mentioned before. So we probably present Santano rain radar. For your information, Santano, Santano is a spatial rain monitoring system using Pro 1932 Mark II marine nav uh, navigation radar technology. Uh, here they are, I mean, the, here are the specifications uh, from Santano. And uh, Santanu is being installed already in several locations over Indonesia, uh, such as Bandung, Bogor, Pontianak, and Esra. But in this study, we conduct in West Kalimantan, Pontianak. Uh, why? Because West Kalimantan in an area located in a point of zero degrees of the equator, which always gets a high enough source of solar radiation heat energy and also humidity. And the rainfall in the West Kalimantan region also has high spatial and temporal variations. Uh, okay, uh, the data that we use, rain gauge and Santano rain radar. And then um, the this is the distance from uh, the, the Santano rain radar. Okay, there are, uh, we have seven sites, seven sites of rain gauge. And then the second method is we, I mean, the method, the main method that we use is, is quantitative daily precipitation estimates. Uh, we know that um, the weather radar doesn't not measure rain directly, but measure the amount of energy reflected by particles in one sample volume. And then um, and we can see this here this uh the ZR relation and we can be we can use that for all rain but unfortunately for the daily precipitation because we only have the daily precipitation data from the rain gauge i mean the daily uh, rainfall from the rain gauge and um, and then um because uh there are seven 120 data and accumulation of radar data in two minutes in every day. So if we convert like um, the conversion in this equation, so it can make the Z value irrational, become irrational. So uh, the data become the very large. And then this is the evolution method. You can see here, there are six uh, evolution methods that we use and then uh, the result. Okay, and this, uh, there are six features, and we can see that the uh, coefficient of determination that we got from six sites that's over uh, uh, it's over 0 0.9 the co the coefficient of determination. So it means that over 90 percent of uh, rainfall of a day, uh, the rainfall of AWS can be explained by radar reflectivity of um, of Santano. It means that Santano succeeded to detect the rainfall. But unfortunately, one side we have um, the co the coefficient of determination in Rasa's uh, site that only zero point one four. It means that only 14% of the rainfall of AWS can be explained by the radar reflectivity of uh, Santano. And then we also combine the, the whole data, I mean that from the seven uh, sites. So we have uh, the new one, I mean the new R-Z relation. You can see R is equal to 
0 0.9 dB that was 5.55. And then we have better um, from the better coefficient of determination if we compare to what we got from the RAS site. So we have a 0 0.75. Um, it means that it's over more than 75% more than 75% of rainfall of the AWS can be explained by radar refractivity of Santano. This is the result of evaluation method that we have. Uh, yeah, we, uh, as I mentioned before, that here in RS, Rasal, so we have um, uh, 0 0.14, I mean, that if, uh, lower than a 50 percent that a, a rainfall of AWS can be explained can be explained uh, by uh, radar refractivity of uh, Santano and then this is uh, the whole data that I that we combine to to become one uh, one RZ re relation yes RZ re relation for West uh, Kalimantan well this is um, statistical calculation that we display uh, in a box plot. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, from the box plot, we can see that the blue one is a rainfall of AWS. Uh, sorry, uh, the black one is a rainfall of a uh, AWS, and that the red one uh, is uh, from uh, Radar Santano. Uh, we already calculate, I mean, we already get the rainfall of uh, Santano. So we uh, can see that uh, generally, rainfall value of AWS is the, the higher data than radar reflectivity of Santano. Um, it means that with the, the larger data range as well. We can see the SB1 here, this SB um, Sabadu. Uh, Sabadu sites are the, uh, are the sites with the most diverse data, both rainfall of AWS and radar reflectivity of Santano too. And then the green one, the mean value of rainfall of AWS is mostly about uh, 10 to 20 millimeters. Uh, but for the mean value of radar reflectivity of sun panel is uh, mostly uh, five, uh, five until uh, uh, 15 uh, millimeter. So we can see from uh, this uh, feature that uh, radar sun tunnel underestimate for the rainfall uh, if we compare to um, rainfall of AWS or observation. Okay. Okay. I hope that this is the last slide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In order to understand the capability of both data in is estimating the rainfall events with varied rainfall, the study was identified by comparing the percentage of frequencies of rain events in each range of rainfall rate. Uh, so the rain of rainfall was divided into six categories. Um, these categories that are uh, zero until one millimeter, one to uh, five millimeter, uh, five until uh, ten millimeter, and also ten millimeter uh, until fifteen millimeter, fifteen to twenty millimeter, and also over twenty millimeter. Okay, and we can see uh, here the ring the the AWS. The AWS cannot um, detect the lower precipitation, I mean the lower rainfall. We can see that of four, zero until one millimeter, um, the AWS cannot detect uh, the rainfall in that range. Uh, but for uh, rain radar of Santano, we can see that uh, in Ambawang and Kakap and also in Sudiadong, uh, we can see that uh, the Santanu can detect that uh, uh, rainfall. And also we jump over for the tw over 20 millimeter, the yellow one um, that we can see. Um, there is, uh, we can, that it is noticeable that AWS tend to not able to determine that as, as I mentioned before. And also in regard with the rainfall over 20 millimeter, the data, both data, uh, observation or, or AWS, and also Santa Rain Radar, uh, has equal capability in estimating, while Santa Rain Radar tends to underestimate. So, yeah, from RZ 
on that relation, this uh, equation. So we can uh, mention of dbz, uh, this dbz, uh, <coughs> sorry, dbz unit to be compared to rainfall unit. Why? Because we need to provide uh, something more informative to the cup to public and the community. So for some information about under, uh, understanding for the public. Uh, and then this is the summary, the last one. I hope so. Okay. okay. To estimate rainfall condition in West uh, Borneo. This is evidence by the statistical value between rainfall of AWS and radar reflectivity of Santanum. And also uh, more than 75% rain events recorded at AWS can be estimated by radar reflectivity of Santanu. And AWS has better capability to estimate rainfall data over 20 millimeter groups, but uh, Santano has a better capability to estimate rainfall uh, between zero until one millimeter. Uh, I should mention this in the summary. <laughs> and then um, also we know that uh, the result of the evaluation of the rain data from rain radar of Santano are possibly detected to predict rainfall data in West Borneo, but it is necessary to carry out further evaluation regarding the, cor the correction of Santana urban radar data by using longer observational data and conducting further studies in other areas. Because we know that the longer data that we can use, that we use, so the more accurate that we can get uh, in the research. So um, that's why we haven't replaced the DBZ unit in Santanu website in in uh, sorry in rainfall in rainfall uh, unit because we need to uh, use longer data and then and then like um, yeah we you need to use a longer data for a better um, for better uh, result so this is um, so the use of Santanu radar in Indonesia will be becoming more efficient in accordance with what is expected thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, thank you, Hartley from Lapan, uh, presenting the quantitative pre precipitation estimation based on Santanu network. So uh, we almost uh, 6 p.m. now. Uh, okay. Uh, now we we have a session for discussion. Uh, let me call the the conferers. So maybe we uh, now we start with uh, Pak Yosafat. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you it, it is uh. your time to give a comment or a question. Okay. How about the Pak uh, Urep? <laughs> yeah, Pak Urep will be after you. Okay, thank you. Okay, good evening all. Uh, I think this uh, research is very good, and I want to applaud the, uh, the presenter <laughs> because it's a uh, innovation and uh, what is it? Uh, creative ideas. I have some re uh, resumes from this research. Uh, I think the number one upwelling is uh, not here, Mr. Supari. Yeah, uh, we do. Uh, Hari Oprianto is okay. Okay, I want to the uh, Ron, uh, Pak Ronnie Kurniawan, Pak Randi, and Pak Joshua. Uh, I think that the observation of with hake, ocean currents, and other data, ocean needs to be further observed about through model data and observation data is verification because in situ data, HF radar, uh, uh, ADCP, etc. For Indonesian is still uh, very limited, so it is necessary uh, to add additional uh, observation at sea, in situ especially improve accuracy. Uh, number three uh, to Roy Bu uh, Roy Saida. Okay, uh, research on the dynamics of the Java Sea, especially in the north of Jepara, is very important. That is. Uh, change the coastline. Uh, if I want to add uh, sea level rise, yeah. sea level rise in your research, uh, 
and land surface temperature to detect tidal flooding. Uh, what is it? Uh, rock. Yeah. Okay. And number four to uh, Ibu Adenova or uh, Ibu ya, Ibu Adenova. The effect of IMSO and IOD uh, on the island of Sumatra is still being studied with the use of more ex, uh, extensive uh, climate data, I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number five, uh, Sea Breeze Front, uh, SBF, about the Pak Muhammad Reza. Yeah. Uh, SBF research still needs to be done a lot and in Indonesia by adding uh, new methods. Uh, I will waiting for this. Real, I, I really agree about you. And I'm very curious for these results. Uh, Pak Muhammad Reza. And uh, Pak Ilham Fajar Putra, hello. <laughs> I even agree uh, more that the, if there uh, uh, you have a Conf, uh, convective flood monitoring done in period uh, GGA, GGA period uh, June, July, and August period. Yes. Okay. I uh, if if uh, I uh, I suggest you you, uh, you won't uh, compare the DTF DTF period. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and the last uh, presenter, um, uh, Pak Fadli. Uh, yes, hydrometeorological disaster, especially those caused by rainfall intensity with uh, the use of rain radar, uh, radar data in the local area need to be studied further to determine the relationship uh, between Santanu local area rain radar reflectivity constant and rainfall in uh, what is uh, this research uh, in your I read uh, your abstract in West Sumatra but in the uh, present there is a uh, West Kalimantan uh, Mr. Fadli yes uh, actually we got it okay to be honest we got an issue uh, we try we already tried to conduct in West uh, Sumatra, but unfortunately the data, uh, this is like, uh, there are a lot of error that we, uh, like uh, non-data that we have in uh, in West Sumatra. So we need to rethink and then we have to uh, find the solution how to how to use this method. We have to keep using this method, but we try, uh, so we try, so how to use this method. So. We then we jump to the, uh, another another uh, location, but we still use the same method and the same instrument. Okay, uh, in this presented as in West Kalimantan. Okay, uh, that's a good, uh, good idea. And thank you very much, Pak Safari. Uh, well yeah. done for the presenter and good evening. Yeah, thank you, Pak Yosafat, for the comments. Uh, does any presenter want to verify or respond to the comment from my server? So if not, then we will move to the uh, uh, the second convener, who is uh, PowerRap. PowerRap, uh, please, uh, time is yours. Okay, thank you. Yeah, here is Adan Maghrib, so <laughs> let her be. be, be. We should move. <laughs> okay, thank you. First, I want to comment the uh, Antenova Fitrianto with the utilization of remote sensing data. Uh, this, this is good presentation and material, but uh, in your paper or your explanation, there is no explanation how the physical interaction between uh, rainfall and the predictor. Uh, you, you only explain the uh, Based on the statistic or uh, correlation or others, so uh, it will be better to 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 explain or to discuss how the physical interaction between the phenomena. Uh, and then uh, for Muhammad Reza Ferdiansa, I have no comment because the presentation is very very good. Uh, this is new new method, 
to detect the sea breeze. Uh, maybe it's, it's very useful to predict the extreme weather at the Jakarta. That's very clear. And then uh, Ilham Fajar Putra Perdana, assessment of convective finish and resting. Uh, I have no comment. This is good also. And the last, for Pak Fadli, it is uh, very impressive uh, because the the result of the verification uh, between radar and rainfall data is very good. The, the correlation are almost positive one. <laughs> it's a surprise. And, and I suggest that uh, to estimate this material rainfall uh, in your paper, you just uh, verify uh, or to estimate the point rainfall, but uh, it would be better to, to estimate the spatter rainfall, for example, around the Kabupaten or Provinsi. Okay, that's all, Pak Supari. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. So, uh, thank you, Pak Urip, for giving comment to the presenter. And uh, I would like to give opportunity for presenter to respond to the comment from Pak Urip. Let's see, Adi Nova Fitriato, will you give a response or clarify maybe? So, Balisa? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, it's just, uh, it's okay. I will enhance my, our research uh, for the next, uh, uh, for the next opportun opportunity. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay, so uh, and then the, before closing our session, Ilham and also Mr. Fadli, will you uh, give any response to the comment from Pauri? For me, I think enough is sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I think uh, we already reached the end of our session. Uh, thanks for everyone uh, for participating in this uh, parallel session. Uh, let us uh, give applause uh, to our presenters. I'm happy to lead this, this uh, session and uh, uh, before closing, our parallel session, uh, I would like to inform you that uh, we still have uh, tomorrow session of ICT mass. So uh, don't forget to join the, to the, the, the third day of uh, conference. And uh, uh, thanks for all. And uh, let's uh, close this session with uh, Alhamdulillah. And Alhamdulillah. I'll see you in the next. Uh, meeting of ICT Mas. See you, bye-bye. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. See you Sorry, again. I, I forget that we, we need to have a photo session. So before closing, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, please uh, switch on your video, your camera. Uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, we only need uh, one Okay, some of us is still uh, switch off the video. Okay, uh, please give your best smile for we capture your screen. Yeah, let me count down. Uh, three, two, one. Yeah, thank you all. And uh, we, we now uh, officially close uh, this session. Bye.